Everybody likes a success. We all want to succeed. But the way Seven Days succeeded in the fall of 1964 was incredible. No one had dared to predict such a fantastic success. Ratings just... And it was not as successful in terms of numbers, but it also struck a chord all over the country, in all the regions and in all kinds of social groups. You didn't... The educated liked it and the uneducated liked it. PAGs loved it. Truck drivers loved it. And there was so much every Sunday night in this in this hour of magazine programming. In the end, there was something for everybody. It was very cunningly put together, so that so that um, everybody had something to love or to be moved by. And since it was so successful. The people who ran it became self-confident is not the word. They formed a state within the state. They they began to devise their own policies, rules. The CBC had rules based on tradition, based on whatever, fairness, decency, whatever. They made their own. For example, the CBC has rules on how to conduct elections, what to do for, I mean, very strict rules. And the way parties are invited to participate, the way the division of time among the parties, where seven days said we can do it our way. And in the federal election of the fall of 1965, for example, they issued their own invitation to the party leaders. And management in Ottawa said, you can't do that, you must not do that. And they were defied. And again and again they were defied. Management was defied. And the, and, and the producers were learned, since the public was with them, how to play cat and mouse games with management outmaneuver them at every time. They got orders, the producers pretended to uh, obey them and somehow managed to circumvent them. And the various levels of management in between, not very well designed at first, no, not enough buffers, um, where helpless to control this. And a, a battle ensued, a civil war, it, disobedience. And the public was with the rebels. And they, the people, there were those two guys, mainly uh, Doug Leiderman and Patrick Watson, and with various other characters, including their bosses, complicit. Uh, they formed committees across the country. Say, when we, once the program was threatened, it was all very public. It was very evident. Once it, once it was clear that there was danger, that management was very, trying to suffocate this program, the country sided with the rebels. And the rebels formed committees across the country called Save the CBC and the Integrity of the CBC. Save Seven Days and the Integrity of the CBC. Committees were formed, the universities across the country, everywhere. Uh, headquarters, then, then, they, they, then they found space. The management of the, uh, the, 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 the rebel leaders formed rebel headquarters in the, uh, in the, at the um, Four Seasons on Java Street, opposite the CBC, and this were rebel. It was. It had all the elements of civil war, barricades, uh, 
and distinguished people from Martin McLuhan to uh, George Grant to all kinds of senators, or Bay Street, all kinds of people sided with the rebels against poor old management. Now I have to say something about the president. The president, who was the central figure in all this, uh, Alphonse Wimet, was a engineer and a very decent and nice man who tried, who had a very distinguished career in the CBC, but he was an engineer. And engineers are not really conditioned to deal with a, a, a situation that's politically explosive and and sensitive is hardly the word, inflammable. And he never really quite understood what this crisis was about. And he thought that, well, the program was very nice, but if these, if these guys are not, you don't know how to behave, uh, then we'll just get some other people to do this. Because engineers, they think it's like a switchboard. You, 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 you uh, remove the switches from one hole and you put another plug in there, and it doesn't matter whether so you, you can always find somebody else to do it. He did not understand. He never understood that the chemistry was such that only Watson and Leiderman, those two characters, can really could really manage this. And together with Reeves Hagen, who there was a there was a kind of a, 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 a combination of forces which was very dependent on their personalities. And there was Doug Leiderman, who was introverted and silent and a little frightening, and very tough. And then there was Patrick Watson, who was extroverted and charming, and with and a set of theater, and and uh, politically very ambitious. Leiderman was amb ambitious, they were all very ambitious, but Leiderman was ambitious for the program. He wanted the program to be just terrific. And pa Patrick Watson, was of course very ambitious for the program too, but he also had personal ambition. He he loved, for example, he met with Judy Lamarche, who was the Secretary of State, who who was a member of the cabinet, and uh, there's this kind of, and and they, and and she, who, who it was known that she didn't get on with uh, with with the president of the CBC. In fact, that she was very nasty about him, and there you see there where the our people sided to solicited support in the government. And the one thing the CBC must not do, which is very, very crucial, it must be independent from government. And there we had, and Reeves Hagen, the master in bureaucratic terms, head of the department, he himself was very active, together with Bernard Austria, who was involved in this in Ottawa, to find allies in the government to support the rebels. So you understand how sensitive that is. How You see, there was a federal institution that was at war with the federal authority. It was just the classical kind of situation uh, happening in the 60s. It was a rebellion within the family, just as outside in the normal world, kids were revolting against their parents. They grew long hair to defy their mothers and fathers. Thus, within the family of the CBC, the children, what anyhow in terms of, in hierarchic terms, uh, producers here, uh, because they have no status compared to top management, were rebelling and it, and and uh, now, one of the great problems we met was a very intelligent man and a very, very honourable man, even though he could not really quite grasp what was happening. But the people around him, the people around him, were not up to his st to standards, and they were. I, I'm thinking mainly of one. Bud Walker, to whom he assigned responsibility for seven days, who was just completely out of his depth. Uh, Reeves Hagen and the others could just, just uh, they could 
they could out talk him within thirty seconds, and he could not. He was, he was not up to his detail level of intelligence, was not up to theirs. So that it was a hopeless situation, ending in great, great drama, high drama, in which in the end. The government was involved. The prime minister was involved. The country was in flames, and it came to an end. Now, I have to, before we, before I end this, I have to make something very clear, and it is not understood. The program came up, came to an end, was not renewed after 1966, not because of government interference. It was not the government, not the prime minister. No member of the government said to Alphonse Wimet, the president of the sea, take it off. The president did it on his own. And he said the war was fought and won on the battlefield of policy. The policies of the CBC, not just in hierarchic terms, but also in terms of balance and fairness, were not being obeyed. Whatever orders were given to the producers were mostly not complied with. And it is on the grounds of CBC policies that this program could not be renewed with the people who were... The CBC was quite willing to run to continue the program with other people, but not with these guys who were defying authority. And in this case, as in so many others, in the end, the established order prevails. Now, in this case, it was the 60s, The established order won. The program was not continued. However, the world was not the same afterwards. The president, a year later, his time was up and he was not, he did not return. He was finished. A new president appeared, George Davidson from the Treasury Board, and his instructions, if that's he didn't probably didn't have to be told, was keep the lid on. And whatever you do, establish your lines of authority in such a way that this kind of thing cannot happen again. And the Public Affairs, the Public Affairs Department, which had given birth to this program, was dissolved in a kind of general area of information program. And the CBC has not been the same since.